In this tutorial, you'll learn how to set up a backend using Spring Boot. We're going to begin by defining all the dependencies that we need. Then we'll define a JPA data model for us to use, repositories for accessing the database, and finally service classes that we can use from the UI. This tutorial is a part of our series on building web apps in Java. So if you want to learn how we got to this point in the tutorial, be sure to check out the earlier videos in this series. So let's begin. The first thing we need to do is add some dependencies to our project. So we'll go into our POM file, the project descriptor here, and we'll find the end of the dependencies tag here. So here we're going to add two new dependencies. The first one is for Spring Boot Starter Data JPA. That's quite a mouthful, but essentially this is the uh, Spring Data JPA flavor that's configured by Spring Boot. The second one we're adding is H2, which is an in-memory database. H2 is a really good database for tutorials like this or anything that you're kind of trying out on your own computer. Spring Boot makes it really easy for you to switch between databases. So even though we're building a app using the in-memory database here, you can use the application properties file here to change that to use something like MySQL if you want to later on. So the first time you add these dependencies here, if you're using IntelliJ, it's going to give you a little pop-up down here asking if you want to enable automatic importing of dependencies. I suggest that you say yes to that. If you don't have that activated or you're unsure, go into the Maven uh, panel here and run the install profile here just to make sure that all these dependencies get picked up and downloaded. With the dependencies in place, we're now ready to start defining the data model. We're going to start building it in the backend package here. So the first thing I'm going to do is define a new package for entities. Now, if you've followed along this series, you know that we're building a CRM system, essentially a system that deals with contacts that belong to companies. So that gives us a good idea of what kind of entity model we need. We need a contact and we need a company. And there's a lot of commonality between these two. So we're going to create an abstract entity that we can use to inherit from. We'll begin by implementing that. So we're creating a new Java class in the entity package called abstract entity. And here we're going to create a class, an abstract class that's a mapped super class in JPA, essentially telling JPA that this is not a entity in and of itself, but it's something that other entities can extend from. Now at this point, I want to point out that there is a text version of this tutorial with all of this code in a copy pastable format. So don't spend too much time trying to like type up all of this code. Instead, try to focus on understanding what it is that we're doing, and then you can go back and copy pasting in, in the code if you want to follow along. The other option is that you can download the code, the end result of this tutorial from the GitHub repo afterwards. So the abstract entity defines how we're generating the ID values, the primary keys of this entity as a Boolean method for determining whether or not an entity is persisted, and it overrides the hash code in equals so that we have a good way of determining whether or not our entity uh, is the same as another entity. Now, the next one we want to create is a contact. And the contact, as you can see, extends from abstract entity has an enumeration of statuses. So we know what status our contact has. Is it imported, whether or not it's contacted, become a customer, or maybe if we already clo uh, closed the contact as a lost cause. We have a couple of different things that we keep track of for a contact, first name, last name, company, status, email. You can see that we have some validation constraints put on these. So for instance, names can't be null or empty, an email needs to be an email, and so on. And here we have a many to one relationship mapped to a company. Now company doesn't exist yet. So we need to create that. We'll create a new company. And here, 
Again, we're extending from abstract entity. A company has a name, has a list of contacts uh, that are all the employees of that company and the relationship mapping. So nothing too crazy. If you're familiar with JPA, you probably understand what's going on. If you're not too familiar with JPA, you can look at these more or less like normal Java objects and just see see what the data is that they're containing. So a company has a name, has a list of employees, a contact, uh, contains the details for a single person. Now that we've defined our data model, the entities here, we need to create some repositories that we can use to access the database for saving and uh, deleting contacts. For that, we're going to create a new package again in the backend package, this time called repository. And here we're going to create two interfaces. The first one will be for contacts. And this is something that's really cool in Spring Data. So by extending from JPA repository and telling it what type we're working with, we're t uh, working with a contact and the contact has a primary key of type long, we get all the basic database operations on that contact for free. So all the save, delete, update uh, operations, find operations we get by just defining this interface. And we're going to do the same thing for companies. So again, we're creating an interface, company repository, Again, we're extending from JPA repository of type company and with a primary key of long. So with these two, we're now able to access the database and create and edit all the backend entities that we have here. Now in a small application, we might be fully okay accessing the database directly from the UI, but in, in real life, it's not necessarily the best practice to give full database access to your UI layer. Instead, what we're going to do is create a service layer in between. So we're going to create service classes that we uh, use to access the database. And those are going to be the API that the uh, UI layer of our application will use. So in the backend package, create a new package called service. And here we're going to create two service classes. The first one will be for the contacts. So we're kind of contact service. And again, just to remind you, all this code can be found both in the text version of this tutorial and in GitHub. So spend more time understanding what it is that we're doing and you can find the code in a copy pasteable format there. So contact service has a service annotation, which makes Spring aware of this service. Means that Spring will initialize the class and it will provide us with implementations of both of these repositories that we created. We'll save them into fields. And then we determine or define the API that we want our UI to have access to. Find all, count, delete, save. Most of these we just pass straight through to the repository. For save, we do a little null check, make sure that we're not trying to save null contacts. And if they're not null, then we save them. Then we'll do the same for the companies. Company service is smaller, so we only inject the company repository and we expose a find all method for right now. The final thing I want to do in, a, in our service classes here is create some test data for us to work with. So by creating a method that's annotated with this post construct, Spring will first set up this service. It will inject all the repositories and everything. And once it's done, it will run this method here. So what we're doing here is, first of all, we're checking to see that if we don't have any companies in the database from before, we go through this list of company names, we create new company objects, we create a list out of them, and then we save them all. Then we do the exact same thing for contact. So we have a 
long list of names. We take these names one at a time. We split them, first name, last name, and create a contact with the first and last name. Then we set a random company, a random status, and create an email based on their first name, last name, and the company. We collect those to a list, and then we call save all to save them to the database. So now, if everything went well, we should be able to run the application and get no errors. So we just wanna make sure that everything builds. We don't see a whole lot of red or a lot of errors anywhere. If you see a lot of errors coming from somewhere, the most likely reason is that you forgot to run the maven install command. So after you added the dependencies to your palm file, it didn't actually go and download them. And that would cause a lot of uh, dependencies not to be available. Right now, you can see that the application has started. And if you refresh the browser right now, you'll see that the UI is empty, but it won't be for long. So in the next tutorial, we're going to take all the data that we just created here, the service methods, and we're going to create a listing page where we list all the contacts that we have in the database in a data grid. So be sure to check out the next video, subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so that you get notified immediately when we have new content coming out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.